What's up, Bottom Nation? Uh, you're catching me in my, my PJs and my little nightcap right now. I'm going on a little vacay, so I'm up late before my flight trying to get all of these audio notes and things done for you. Thanks for, for making it possible for me to take a vacation. I'm going to Sacramento. That's almost sold out. San Francisco almost sold out. Uh, L.A. and San Diego. I know you guys are late buyers in Southern California, but get on it. Um, and AshleyGavin.com to get on my text alert. And then Patreon.com slash WHGS for bonus episodes. Um, anyway, and then today's episode, my very good friend Eric Williams, who runs the Gay Ass Podcast, which I've done, I believe, twice now. Um, he's on the pod today, and he talks about opening up his relationship. So I think I talk a little bit about opening up the relationship, and it's a great episode. He's he's a real, really, really talented guy. I met him actually in a casting director course, if you know what that is, but misery, misery. And uh, we both kind of made it through together. So I love this guy. I think you're going to really love the episode. Um, my cat, if you're watching this on YouTube, he is really very much in the frame. All right. Um, think, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Have a good week guys. I have been married for now four years with my husband for 10. Are you guys open? So we moved to LA eight years into our relationship and then we started, uh, f-ing other people mostly together and we have really specific rules that, and it's been excellente. I'm in a gay renaissance in my life right now and I'm having my EK love. I am <laughs> Okay, I'm excited about this one. Me too. This is Eric Williams. How do you know Eric Williams? We've DM'd on Instagram before. Internet, honey. Extremely <laughs> sexy nudes back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I thought yours was tasteful, but uh, aggressive enough. The Thank chest you. hair is like, like the way this tank top <laughs> just perfectly outlines. It's like from zero to 60, somewhere in under What if the- I shaved below where the tank top ends? <laughs> <laughs> like one of those like fake turtlenecks it's, when I you can see it. I was about to say a dicky, but with chest hair. I'm actually the first hairless Jew you've ever met. This is all a smock. Wait, <laughs> chest hair dicky. That should exist for, for trans masks and non-binary people. No, because trans masks and non-binary people have like good fashion sense. I don't think they're wearing- <laughs> I'm like not a- saying that the dicky is for the style. I'm saying it's for affirmation. Oh yeah. You can have a binder with some chest hair. Oh. That might feel good to people. That's actually probably, I wonder if they make that. I wonder if they make that too. Listener write in, do you have a chest hair dicky? A hairy. Yes. <laughs> a dicky and a hairy. Mm, and I'm hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you and I have known each other for a really long time, but we haven't been in touch in a while. I know. We've had a storied history though. We're trying to figure out when was it? I know exactly <gasps> when. And I was in love with you from the moment you spoke the first, like the first word. I'm gonna just tell the story. Please. Okay, because this is actually a great little flashback of what my life was before this podcast. Okay, so we did a casting director course with Allison Kirshner. Name drop. <laughs> I love Allison. Love. She's great. And she loved us. She did. I'm glad you're saying us. So I took this casting director course and if you don't know what a casting director course is, they are <laughs> hell. They're actually really, it's actually really helpful to me. I don't even meet. know what this is. It's actually really helpful to meet with the casting director, but it's sort of like a, almost like a pay to play where you and a bunch of actors go in, the casting director looks at your headshot, assigns you a scene mm-hmm. from some piece of media that already exists, like a movie or a film or movie or a film, a movie or a TV show, yada, yada. There are movies and films. Uh-huh. Go on, Maddie. Marvel and okay, like yep. the lighthouse are not the same medium. Yes, yes. I, I. Do you know what I mean? Like the one is a movie and one is a film. The and and cinema is like and annoying. the Bushwick soft boys are going ape shit right now for you. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> you're like I know how to reel them in. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> film reel them in. But I. Uh, so we were in this class, mm-hmm. and the reason you do it is you hope that the casting director likes you, and if something that fits your type comes in across their desk, you will be in their mind. Mm. Now imagine how many of these courses you have to do to build relationships. So you're spending all this money and there's like, there's like talk about whether or not it's ethical, but this was (laughs) at the time 
really the only way yeah. to get in front of casting And there directors. was controversy from coast to coast. New York was able to, in LA, it was outlawed. Yes. Like the specific form of it. So we were doing it in its golden era, if I may say. The golden era, yes. Like, um, like what was that? Oh, what was that one? Jen's, um, like, what was it called? The actor's green room or oh. something? <laughs> Which is borderline a cult. Well, fully. Fully. I would say not border, I would say we're in the trenches. Yeah. People were really like, wow. And I and I went to that for a second too. Yeah. So we so we, we were both doing these classes. I was also doing stand up comedy right. at the time. I may have just stopped doing improv. I was doing everything. And with the outlawing of this, like some people at home are gonna be like, That's awful, like actors shouldn't have to do that. But then when they outlawed it, there's no fair replacement. No. It's not like the Screen Actors Guild is coming out and making these courses available for free to make it an even playing with. Then what just happens is the the Nepo people in the industry just continue to have their inside connections. Right. And you you can't do anything to meet. It's it's the entertainment business is a clusterfuck. It is the worst. I think it's really good for the sort of like internal complexion of your soul. <laughs> a test like build it, character. <laughs> I actually think it's really healthy and cool. <laughs> I will say do about auditions. It is harrowing to see what like your type is. Like every audition oh. I get is like the other friend. <laughs> like it's literally It's devastating it's, when you feel when you're excited the best about friend it too. And then the other the funny friend. Yeah. It's like it's like this is a movie about a hot girl who falls in love with a guy and her weird friend fucking Guthrie who has a peg leg <laughs> and I come in and I'm like, Hey, <laughs> but isn't that how excited you get when you get like a perfect breakdown for you? You see the peg, like, you're you're like that's it. Yes. For me, it's um nerdy Jew who has no self-esteem. I'm like, I'm going to nail this one. <laughs> like, Wait, why am I excited for like, so a I don't like, I don't type mm. that. My big issue is like no type. Cause I can't play gay. Cause I'm not gay enough, which is what? Yes. Whenever I go in for lesbian, I, girls with sleeves, girls with nose piercings, girls with short oh, wow. hair. Yeah. Like I don't type into gay. And can, so what I used to go in for the most was young mom. I went in for young mom, like, like I get that too photograph. as a 24 year old, which is so depressing. Wait, I should, <laughs> I should know They'll that. Be like, Wide set that, birthing hips has had three children, old as fuck. <laughs> Wait, let me, let me pull up this You're photo. Perfect. Let me pull. I'm like, I just graduated college. But that's because young mom, you have to remember that in the Midwest, young moms are 23. That's a good point. Um, Let me pull up this photo because I, I used to do, where the fuck I is still want to, we sort of did this at one of the live pods at the Bell House, but we, we made Femme Ashley. I don't know if you saw. <gasps> it was really fun. But I want to do a full day where I like really, really do your makeup and like really. We should do it at the next live pod. That would be so fun. It okay. was insane. Here we go. Like oh, here. I'll Here, find the picture. This isn't my headshot, but like, here's like what I was wearing oh, I, for the headshot. And you know what's funny is this takes me back to when we met because I remember seeing your headshot and like, I 100%, I know her. Yeah, like that was more- Oh my God. That was oh for my young my mom. God. Like we should, we should just put these in with the graphics on the podcast. But wow. like, that was what I was on, this. Oh my <gasps> God. She loves JC Penny. Oh my God. And I would get callbacks, but I never booked it because of course there's just a slightly off energy. <laughs> you just, know, this picture looks like, you know how like in restaurants they'll put you on the wall. Like if you finish the super smash burger or whatever, it looks like that, but for that's like- where I got it. Well, it looks like that, but for Kohl's cash. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like they would hang you up above the register of like most Kohl's cash used this year. I mean, <laughs> she's not laughing. The, well, she's because not it's, laughing. it's traumatic to look at this because it feels like I'm in the closet. Like this literally looks like the gay girl who's like, I love, I love sucking dick. I love, I love. It boys also looks men. like what we thought we were supposed to be doing. That is exactly and what it that's is. That's why because it you feels have triggering. No guidance around. There's no way to know. And so when you're we just were trying so hard, yeah, you look so much more yourself now. Yes, I'm a fully actualized human being, which is very nice. <laughs> I, I enjoy um, feeling connected to myself. Peace, blessings. I'm gonna go die. Is that okay, really? Quick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I cut you off to say that. Not at all. I just think that when we were doing these classes, we both saw in each other this like spark of. Well, that's the. Other, I've said this on this podcast. I think before. That's the thing. You go in, and typically there are it's you and nine people that are really on their last thread. 
<laughs> they, they, we, because this industry is hell. Yeah, and and they and the, it gravitates uh, people that tend to be you know artists like. Well, and they're also trying to feel productive in some way. Yes, because there's nothing we can fucking do. Which is the so we then shell out the money. Yes. We tell the casting director we are great and they will believe us if we are and we are and we were and we continue to be. But then <laughs> if something doesn't happen, you think, am I great? Yes. Let me spend money on another one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you're losing it. You're yeah. losing your mind. And people come in at various points of their mind losing process because of this industry. So what ends up happening is there's two people in the class, Max that are really super talented, still sane, still out there hustling, and you connect with those yeah. people. Chris Burns from Fat Carrie Grat Bradshaw yes. was in my Improv 101 class. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Sarah Cooper was in my Improv 201 or 301. Where are they now vibes? Oh my God. Right? Like, so you meet those people. You do. If you do this long enough, you will. But, you know, you and I met at, in a hole in the wall comedy club. Like, where did we meet? Sesh, I think technically. Is that the first place we met? Yeah, go to wow. Sesh. Wait, no, that's not true. Oh? That's not true. The first place we met, and it haunted me for years, not years, but okay. We were at, I was visiting New York, I was in college, and we were doing a show at some just like cafe. And we, we didn't even talk, but I had this joke. I was, I had not accepted that I was bisexual, but I did have a joke that was like, I look like I eat pussy at truck stops. <laughs> and then you came on after me and you were like, I actually eat pussy at truck stops. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what have I done? That was so problematic. And oh. now look at us now. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I think in my head, I was like, she was like this fake bisexual. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> no, but then not at all. Now I'm like, you're like one of my best friends. But that is technically the first place we met. And I didn't realize until we were doing the podcast that I'm like, that's that was you. Have I, you had your gas station experience? <laughs> I've not had my gas station. <laughs> she bought a rabbit at a gas station, and that has been. A <laughs> and fucking, that's close enough. Honestly. And honestly, that alone is a gay gas station experience. Oh, rescuing a rabbit from gas station hell. Yeah, that's that's gay sex. I'm so much more non-binary than I am bi. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to derail your story, but I. That is where we met, and I think it's very, very funny. What I was gonna say is, Eric, you got picked for your scene. I don't. It, it was something about being like an Apple Store employee. Oh yeah, crashing. Crashing. Yeah. Yeah. And holy shit, I was like, this is one of the most talented actors. Oh I've my god. Et, et, ever. Cap e v e r <laughs> underscore. Take take whatever scene of T Timothy Chalamet. Call me by your name. Whatever. This was one of the Where's best the fireplace and like, it's, <laughs> and he's doing it. There's no cuts. There's no takes. This is live in a stupid little, uh, am, um, um, fluorescent lighting classroom. Like you fucking just my heart, like soared watching you. I learned from watching you. And I, I was like, I'm going to stay friends with this guy. I do oh. not know what well, then I, I put you in my web series. Yes. And I don't know what I did to deserve meeting Ashley Gavin on that day. But ever since then, like even just you right now is making, I'm feeling warm from head to toe. And Good. then when I started my Good. podcast you and should. I reached out to you, you always proved to me how, yes, the industry is awful. And we talked about that. But when you meet someone like you that actually encourages and like I, I, of course, during that time, and during everyone's time, I think we, of course, have these moments where like, am I worth anything or what, why am I doing this? Do I have value? There's so many of us. And then I met you and you like gave me a mirror to be like, no, you should be. And you That's are. That's what the friends in this industry are for. Oh they're, my they're, God. Like, they're a mirror. They're a mirror. It was so, and then my podcast, like I again had those thoughts of why would I, who would care? And then you were the first guest on that's a gay ass podcast. And since we have such a natural rapport, I was like, she's so good at this. I think I can do this. And now I'm about to be like a hundred episodes in. And like, I really credit you. And you've had you. some really big guests. Amazing guests. We're doing- you, Like plug the podcast to the people. So it's the podcast asks, whose fault is it that you're gay? You know, who do we blame, babe? And I've had <laughs> Bowen Yang on it. I had Fat Carrie Bradshaw, Ashley Gavin twice. I've had Brian Safi. I've had Jeffrey Self. I've had Pat Regan, Catherine Cohen. I've had, you know, just like really, oh, Matt, Matt Rogers, of course. Joel Kim Booster. Just like- Great guests. Amazing, amazing. people that really- have taught me that we are all 
a little fucked in our heads <laughs> in a way that is really unifying because I, again, ha- would have these feelings of, do I belong? I, you know, I went to college for acting and comedy has always been my biggest love, but I grew up in- Are you NYU? Yeah. And I, Tish? and I, yeah. And I, I graduated being like, I only can I do love that. Tish kids. I'm nervous. What? Well, I'm nervous because there's, there's- Well, there's like the- there's like the other stuff. There's but like, the monstrous Tish actors. And then yes. there's the really, I, I actually, I'm going to tell this joke at my show tomorrow where I literally lost my virginity in a room <laughs> on the other side of the wall was Academy Award nominee, Stephanie Shu. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. She, but she hustled for such, I know a little bit about her cause I have friends who are friends with her yeah, yeah. and like, my God, that girl, that girl really stuck with it. Oh I my mean, God. she booked like, one commercial in like 10 years or something after her career. And then just like, then did SpongeBob on Broadway. Like She did. And she and SpongeBob is crazy. Cause I'd run into her and they did like 25 workshops to try to like make, create the show and like build the show. And they would just do workshop after workshop after workshop. And then it finally went to Broadway. But I will say she in school was still always a star. Yes. And um, yeah, you can, and she she's just so magnetic. Yeah. And then I remember uh, actually a friend of mine who uh, you probably know, Noah Garden Swartz and Esther Steinberg are great yeah. comedians. And Noah was working on Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And he told me when Stephanie Shu went into audition for it and she ended up booking it, it was like, I think her first really big, yes, that was the big thing, um, yes. big, big thing for that type of show. And, and then I found out when she booked everything everywhere all at once. And I was the dumb idiot. I was just like, I hear the filmmakers are great, but I don't know if it's like going to go anywhere. And that's what she got her fucking yeah, Oscar nominee yeah. for. So like I mean, her audition for that, I know everyone talks oh, about yeah. it, but that audition tape blows my mind. How She's crazy. unreal. And I, the true story is that she was the first person I met in college. It was in the, like a, a accepted students weekend. I sat down, Stephanie, she was next to me. We ended up being in the same program the first two years and I fucked her roommate. <laughs> 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 Who is a great guy, Julian. And we're, he's the only person I have dated, hooked up with that I actually like still like have maintained a friendship with. Do you think that's, that's like really a more sweet. lesbian thing? Yes. Because I see it a lot with gay men too. Or do you think gay men a little bit more like are not as friends with the exes? I think it's, I think it's more gay men are not friends with the exes. I also though, and this is interesting because I'm in a new, I'm in a gay renaissance in my life right now. I moved to LA a year and a half ago <laughs> and I'm having my eat gay love. I am truly. <laughs> Why we talk about eat, pray, love on this podcast all the time and I don't know why no one has said eat gay love <laughs> which Honey. sounds delicious by the way I, I would know. love to eat some gay love but can right I get now. it with eat gay onion. love is me binging Ben and Jerry's because I'm not getting pussy in my bedroom <laughs> but what what flavor I'm a Ben and Jerry uh, the chocolate fudge wait brownie. this is actually this is actually a really that's your favorite flavor of all time chocolate fudge brownie I think so yeah you as well I'm an OG chocolate fudge brownie. If I, the mood though, I Wait, might go tonight three, though. Put your sun moon rising on Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> okay, that half baked. And then <gasps> I'm recently getting into the topped ones. Of course you the, are. The, the ganache. Like, whatever, the ganache. Honey. We all love to be topped every now and then. I, yeah. And, when the mood and calls. And goddamn, if it's Ben and Jerry's, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up. Sun, moon, rising. Ben and Jerry's. Uh, chocolate fudge, brownie, sun. My moon would be, God, this is hard. It's like choosing my children. I Ben and Jerry's, I stare at the freezer and just, it's better than therapy. My moon is <laughs> peanut butter half-baked. And my rising is going to be... I'm going to go controversial. They have a mint chocolate cookie that is absolutely Davoon. Um, <laughs> I fucking love you, man. Um, Every word you say is okay, like- You guys, are, I'm about to put something out there that I think is going to get a lot of pushback that I didn't realize it would get pushed. <laughs> My son is Cherry Garcia. I was about to say that as a joke of like, what if I said Cherry Garcia? What is this? Illinois? Skokie? <laughs> okay. My moon- is Chunky Monkey. <gasps> Not the banana. <laughs> True or false, the banana tastes real to you. No, it doesn't taste real. I have an interesting factoid about the banana flavor. <laughs> Do so, you? Apparently. That's when- so crazy, Maddie. What's it so, <laughs> what is your factoid? It's so on brand for me. Is this your special interest? 
<laughs> well, it's so it's, I am not on the spectrum. And I say that with no, like I thought maybe I was. And then my therapist told me I'm actually the opposite of what well, you talk about your father being on the spectrum and you're sad. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I was like, maybe I am. And she was like, no, no, you're the opposite. Of, she literally said to me, you are the opposite of autistic because autistic people have trouble picking up on social cues. And she was like, you are so neurotic that you invent social cues yes. that do not exist yes. oh. and then respond to them. So yes. it's sort of like a horseshoe theory thing where, you know, but the banana flavor and <laughs> when they, you know how like all banana candy, you're like, what do you mean this is banana? Like it, it's like its own thing. Apparently in like the fifties when they made that bananas, there was genetic, like GMO bananas were different. And that breed of banana was like wiped out by some virus, but bananas oh. used to actually taste like what the artificial flavor tastes like. Wow. I never thought and I'd be I thankful for a true. banana virus. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. She thinks it's wow. true. I like feel really sad about those bananas. I know. And then it's scary because there's not enough genetic diversity in bananas that like if there is another virus like that, like, I don't know, a virus, but whatever. Bananas could be gone. Bananas could, could be gone. Lose bananas? We could lose bananas. Cherish what you fucking Shh. have. <laughs> <laughs> Earmuffs. <laughs> this is the only... <laughs> My banana that I want at Coney Island. Wait, but sorry, but your third flavor. I totally derailed you. Um, Probably fish food. Yeah, I used to be a fish food girl. Wait, and what is in that? Caramel Mar chunks, marshmallow. Uh, marshmallow, chocolate gobs. Interesting. I'm not like a big, I obviously love chocolate, but like I find chocolate in ice cream. I just have to be in the mood. I can find it to be a little like one note overwhelming. So mm. I don't do a lot of chocolate. I'm like chocolate everything all the time. Like I have a sweet tooth, but it's like specifically chocolate. Um, let's get into the gay sex. We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with Eric Williams. You have three first names. Eric Daniel Would you Williams. Say, okay. I mean, well, Williams, Williams singular. You know, it is have, three first I have, names. I'm a three first names person. What's your middle name again? Helen. Oh, I don't like talking about it. That picture, that's Helen. That's Helen. I was going to say, I mean this with love. It does track that Helen is your middle name because it shows colors. It shows range. It shows background. It shows where you were, where you're going, and who you used to be. <laughs> it's not who you are now, but she used to be. Helen is my my attempt at being in the closet. Exactly. I'm I Helen. Scary eyes. <laughs> Red, fearful eyes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have three first names. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when I was writing that web series, we were just obsessing over you the listen, entire time. Well, listen, I also have three straight brothers. The numbers of three, I feel like it's prominent in my life. And I- Are you the youngest? Middle, I have an older twin and a younger. Okay. So I've always- Wait, an older- I have an older brother, a twin brother, and a younger brother. Okay, I, for some reason, thought you said an older twin. <laughs> I know, I thought, I thought, like, wow, I have we're an older really twin, getting specific. A younger twin, and a middle twin. Wait, I'm so sorry. <laughs> wait, um, isn't your twin, wait, 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 wait. He's five foot four. Yes, yes, that is so funny. You're like real life Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Which one am I? I'm the kidding. Um, I, you know, I am truly that. And except if Arnold Schwarzenegger were like a deeply closeted, deep into puberty, 13 year old at six feet tall while his twin brother was five feet tall. Voice had not dropped at the bar mitzvah. I'm giving vibrato baritone. No wonder you're funny. Like there's no way you can grow up like being cast into an actual like 1990s movie plot. <laughs> like you, your, your life was like created by a producer. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, we're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. Maybe with Eric Williams. I'm Ashley Gavin. Ah, Patreon.com slash WHS to support the pod. Get on my text list. I've got a big theater tour coming up over the summer. I'm working on my solo show uh, about mental health stuff. You can watch it streamed online on the Patreon. Did I say cis gay white woman? She, her, now, you have. now I have she, her pro, uh, pronouns. Nah. And then as always to keep me from getting canceled our our little, our little hall monitor over here. Um, yelling at the lunch lady about, I would never do that. No, you wouldn't <laughs> asking the lunch lady for some extra chocolate ice cream. That's on brand. As me, Maddie Wiener. I'm Maddie Wiener. Hello. Uh, I use she, they pronouns. Probably gender fluid. I don't even, you know, I'll get back to you. But I'm a comic. Uh, you can get on my mailing list to find out when I go on tour at Maddie T. Wiener on Instagram. I also write essays on Substack. And I have another podcast called How's That Working For You? It's like a comedy podcast. 
It's a good time. But find me on Instagram. Follow follow them, guys. It's important. Do you and mind I, introducing your? Oh, sorry. I just want to say I reached out to Maddie because I saw videos in the rest of her story, and I think you are so fucking funny. Oh, thank you. And that's Maddie's one of the say. funniest people on the planet. Oh, Wait, I'm a huge stop. fan. Thank this you is so a, much. and this is a. My name's Eric. Cis gay white. He him pro. <laughs> obsessed with these two. Dream to be here. I host a podcast. That's a gay ass podcast. Ashley Gavin has done it twice. Maddie's going to be doing it, and I'd be happy to do it again if you'd like to co-release. Are you this. kidding? Would be a dream. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com. Go sign up, and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things and I will let you know, okay? Because there's a lot of cities coming and I just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do, I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. I, I don't have like a great story for today, but have you ever done that exercise? Okay, I think gay people... Tell me whether or not you agree with this. Our glow up potential mm. post high school, mm. wildly higher glow up potential than the straight population. Mm -hmm. One million percent. You know that the hottest people in high school were the hottest people in high school and the uggoist queers <laughs> became the hottest and adults. I, put my, I would like to say, I put myself in the category of uggoist queer. Oh yeah, I was looking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I mean, just like big sweaters, mismatched socks. Actually, I still dress like that sometimes. But yeah, this kind of sounds cute. Yeah, <laughs> actually, sounds like a sick fit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like dyed my own hair in the sink, like a lot of different colors. We just had like a rough few years where it's like we're looking a lot better now. Yeah. For me, it was like I was scared of clothes. <laughs> I was scared of like. <laughs> That's so funny. Triggered. I was. How did that manifest? I didn't know how to dress. Mm. I did not get. And there were no role models of masculine women yeah. who weren't fucking Hillary Clinton in a pantsuit. <laughs> that was like the definition of masculine women. Obviously, that's a super problematic definition to call even call it that but that's what it was back then it was like there can you no paint a picture of what you wore to school <laughs> i want to i want to see ashley everything Gavin. you do is funny <laughs> everything you do is funny i had like a pair of like loose fitting corduroy pants that like the corduroy. corduroy was gone because it was like wearing thin and like tennis shoes like running sneakers and then like t-shirts like just a like a sh shapeless hanes you know, like t-shirt. Like I just, I wanted to look masculine, but also not totally leave my femininity behind. <sighs> and just nothing existed like that, you that know? That really takes me back because it, it's the idea that you wanna show a shred of who you are, but you're too afraid to go too far. And so for me, it was baggy khakis, a blue collared polo shirt, but then I'm sure I would have like an anklet that no one could see. Oh my God. An anklet that no one could see. That sounds like gay spoken word poetry. Yeah, that's like your memoir. That's like a, yeah, the <laughs> title of my one man poem. show. <laughs> yes. An anklet that no one could see. An anklet that, and then, and then the audience has one person because they hate the title so much. <laughs> um, I, I think oh, you okay? that, oh, I'm great. I'm I might great. need to move those shelves. You're the second person to do oh, that. It was a tiny top. I'm gonna put some foam on there. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm totally okay. Okay. It sounded louder than it was. Um, and then it crashes down and then cracks my skull. <laughs> um, Very viral episode. <laughs> Watch this gay comedian. <laughs> Lesbian comedian literally wrecks gay comedian. Lesbian comedian gets sued for building non-compliance. <laughs> gay Jew loses short-term memory. <laughs> Lesbian comedian destroys gay um, Jew. I like who and I'm a what? <laughs> <laughs> That's my impersonation. That's my impersonation of you. <laughs> right that's, after the accident. That's your impersonation of a gay Jew who has no short-term memory. Yeah. 
I think it has legs. I really <laughs> should. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think you got interrupted by the head tapping. Moment. I don't know what I was saying because oh I lost my, my memory. God, high school. <laughs> oh yeah. Anklet. Anklet. But now I feel like I want to talk about fucking. I haven't talked enough about fucking. No, we haven't gotten to you yet. You're Thank okay. God, and also okay. don't even worry about it. Like everyone listening knows that like, this is a place where we can openly talk about sex, gender, those stories. But like, Less. those are like very layered. There's like very, we've had episodes that are like raw. We recorded yeah. one yesterday that was like raunchy, raunchy, like raunchy. And then you get episodes that are more like what I'm describing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the funny thing about the talk about what we wore to school, because I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri in a very, like very straight community. I was just in St. Louis. I saw we that. were just in St. Louis. How are the audiences? Really fun. Good. Yeah. I the thing Those is shows that, were were phenomenal. Yeah, they were. Do you know what's great about St. Louis? It's actually and it's healing for me to even talk to you about this right now. Is because I grew up <laughs> in the very like there are no gay people anywhere. Yeah. And then <laughs> when I go back, I mean, you're right. It literally every single thing you do is funny. <laughs> down to like the second, like yeah, it is his specificity <laughs> in like his specificity is. Unreal. It's like you make choices when you breathe. Yes. It's like yes. Yes. <laughs> truly, Are you hard? I'm like it's, I'm 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 insert problematic health response right now. I feel like I'm like vibrating from my nose to my toes to my holes to my bows. <laughs> um that's to me wearing 20 bows. Um so I didn't know gay people except the guy that cut my hair, Ernesto, shout out. But <laughs> I would go back to visit recently and I would go to this park in like more of a queer area and I saw gay people for the first time in St. Louis and I was like, oh my God, they exist. So I'm sure the people that saw your show were the like people that I wish I had been around when I was living there. Yeah. Because St. Louis does have a, a great queer community. All this to say, I- I met the cutest like mm. daddy, uh, like not even probably around my age, like 35 year old, like kind of daddy guy at the antique shop. Oh God, I'm Cause already... I, one of the things I do on the road is I'll go antiquing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even always buy something, but it's really nice to just like go and look at, cause antiquing in another place you learn about the history. Oh my God, am I a 75 year old dyke? <laughs> You're about to become the am, new host of am, Antique Road Show. Am I, am I, have I just turned into like an elderly cottage cord lesbian and like two fucking- You know fucking... the best things about antique. <laughs> 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 Well, you go and you learn about the history yeah. of the city that you're in because you can see the trends in design and architecture through the antiquing. I already see your TV show right now. And I also like to go thrifting. Yeah. It's also much cheaper outside of New York. So sometimes I'll find something and, you know, like try and bring it home with me. Uh, but what am I talking about? The daddy. St. Louis, the daddy. Oh my God. Super cute guy. I, daddies, the older I get, the more pronounced my daddy issues become because I'm always like mustache bald. I'm hard. Like it's always <laughs> like it's the old, the more into daddies I am. And a, and a mid, something about a Midwestern corn fed daddy who's in an antique shop of all places. Pasture raised daddy. Pasture raised with taste about ancient trinkets. I say that's <laughs> honestly. It's a performance. You're honestly, watching Honestly, I will touch my toes or I will do a back bend hard. Whatever he wants, I will do. Um, <laughs> He was great. He was and lovely, lovely guy. I got to speak with him. Nick, shout out. Uh, but anyway, the reason I was thinking about like the glow up was because I was thinking about these crushes that I had when I was young. Mm. And have you gone and looked up your crushes? Of course. Who are straight. Not of celebrity course. crushes, like IRL. IRL crushes. Oh yeah. And you look them up and you're like, as a queer person, you never got that win in high school. You know, you were always the weirdo. You always, everyone kind of knew you were different. You couldn't find yourself, but because we had this sort of delayed onset of personal growth and, yeah. and self-actualization, we have this almost fountain of youth. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Because you're, we're continuing to grow and, and like be, oh, we're open, we're more open to change because we've had to be. Mm. We're more open to self growth because we've God. This is the gayest story no, this I've is ever awesome. told. No, this is so awesome. It's okay. really true because it's all about claiming your authenticity for the first time, which I think translates to an outer refreshness. Yes, and if you, you oh no, sorry, you said it to me the day that I was like, oh shit, 
I guess I really am non-binary. I came in here and before I told you, you were like, something's different about you. It was like the way I was carrying myself and the way I felt in my body. And I'm not even saying that to like hype myself up, but no. I was like, wow, it like changes you. Yeah. And people can see it even if they don't know what it is. It's like when you really are like, it was like, oh yeah, the the little thing I was keeping in the basement, I fixed it. Yeah. And then you're in a place where if you can keep your heart and your mind open, you can do that your entire life. You can, <sighs> for your whole life, just decide who you are at this stage and the best way to like live that, live that authentically. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel like there's all different types of people and this isn't just necessarily a gay straight thing, gender, whatever. There are lots of people who have a growth mindset throughout their life and those are the coolest fucking people on the planet. I, I love those folks. But I think when you're queer or you're different in some way, you're more likely to do that because mm -hmm. you've been put in a position where you almost have to, you know, make a statement about living authentically. Anyway, the girl that I had a big crush on, and actually she seems like her life is like very fulfilling. Um, she's just ugly. No, <laughs> no she's not. She's, she, she's beautiful. She's, she's beautiful. Um, and she's successful, but it's just like the type of thing where I was like, I thought you were of God yes, mm. yes. and you're just like a human being. Yeah. That is a wild thing. When the sort of spell has been lifted. Yeah. Oh, I have a library teacher that like a third grade, you know, the class is library where they read you a book cause you're a child and <laughs> his name is Joe. That's actually really funny that you would like call it library. We're going to library class. No, you're sitting in a library, honey. I'm being babysat. <laughs> but his name is Sorry, Joe. Sorry, you as like a five-year-old being like, I'm being babysat right now. Don't fucking lie to me, okay? <laughs> don't try to convince me I have I agency. actually know how to read. <laughs> and I learned three weeks ago, and I don't want to read The Giving Tree again. <laughs> I His name was Joe, is Joe, and I looked him up all of a year ago. So think about that was 26 years ago I was in his class. Still hot. Since you mentioned my chest hair, he had nipple hair that were like headlights into my soul. How do you know about the library teacher's nipple hair? Well, that's an interesting question. It's, um, <laughs> because, it's because we would play. You kick the ball with your foot. You run like it's a baseball game. Kickball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was peak gay. Whatever your definition of gay is. A gay man forgetting the word for kickball, an imaginary sport, not even a real fucking. And the There's sports no in the name. The, 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 this sport exists for gay people because we cannot do anything. <laughs> kickball is the sport that was invented because. I know, that's why I, I, I felt the most accessible to me. I couldn't even remember its name. I'm sorry, kickball. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Don't meet your heroes. I um the um <laughs> his name is Joe and he would play kickball and I guess it was like a really hot Missouri day and I think he took his shirt off. Bro, was, Missouri, Missouri gets hot in a way. Humid, hot, and it and he was so he would take his shirt off for the kickball and I was just like you know seven years old is zeroing in on the 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 titty hair and it was and then the tra happy trail et cetera, et cetera et cetera. God, being gay is so like in you. Oh my god! You know god. what I mean? Can you imagine being sad? Like you're seven years old and you're like, I love nipple hair. I'm like, not. It's so. It's so. It's such a fact. But it's so funny too that it was like when I was younger, I would like think girls would were so hot or like would like like the only like not even porn, but like images that I would look at were like women. And I was like, well, it's just because women are so sexualized in the media. And that's the reason <laughs> why it's erotic to me because like men aren't sexualized as much. So I'm sort of just like for like, I'm not gay. <laughs> How old were you when you had that thought? I'm picturing six year old. Well, I mean, I'm harmed. No, I literally was maybe like nine years old. Wow. Maybe you didn't think the thought women are sexualized in the media, but like. No, you, I remember you, distinctly you, thinking that because I was like, well, what you? does this mean? <laughs> you had the feeling that women are stigmatized by media or the thought. Do you know the difference? Like, that I'm trying no, to describe. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know what you mean. And I literally had the thought. I was like, well, I don't want to. I was like, there's no women in my life that I want to kiss. Like, the image of like kissing a woman is not. But I was like, the only thing that turns me on is pictures of like Scarlett Johansson. Mm. And then I was trying to make sense of that. And I was like, well, that's because there's no What you're describing right now is what I did at 12, which was watch men masturbate. And I told myself I was just learning techniques for how to jack off. <laughs> I wasn't attracted to it. I was just learning. I'm a student. <laughs> 
<laughs> but really, I wanted to watch them fuck. It's funny because for me, I just knew that I loved women and I was hoping I would love men. Mm. I was oh, hoping yeah. that it would come, that I could be bisexual and then like, opt into being straight, basically. Oh, that's very relatable. I mean, I, yeah. I tried, I've said this before, but I try to um, picture myself having sex with Samantha Jones in the shower. Samantha Jones is the gayest exactly. pick of all time. Oh, and that's why she, I was able to kind of get kind of hard, but then I realized- For friendship. For friendship. You and got to, hard for Samantha Jones's friendship because exactly. that's, that's like, yeah, what- yes. All I wanted was to be in Hell's Kitchen with her over a holiday. Right. day. Yeah, exactly. Except I was, but then I did have a girlfriend in high school because I very much was like, I know in my bones that I'm gay and- you know, my librarian's nipple hair got me a decade ago. However, I wanted to really be sure. And I've said this publicly and I, she was so gracious to be there for me, but I literally had no blood flow when I tried to be straight. Yeah. Not a drop. And I just knew that I was so biologically gay that that was like 17 year old me being like, Check that off the list. I'll deal with it later. Came out a year later from that. Mm. So that like the process was very much like yours of like, hopefully I'm bisexual and will just be the straight, correct version. Yeah. And then once I really knew it was not going to happen, I think I knew subconsciously that I was going to graduate high school and leave St. Louis and then flourish in that way, which is what I, ended up. I came out two months before I graduated high school. So like, that is what ended up happening. I think it's actually even incredible that you came out in high school in St. Louis. Did you, I guess I'm, I guess I'm, anyway, just like all these thoughts of crushes flowing through my brain and oh what they're God. doing now. But that's my gay sex from this week. The funny thing about me is I have been married for now four years with my husband for 10. And so we, we still. Are you guys open? So we moved to LA eight years into our relationship and then we started uh, fucking other people mostly together and we have really specific rules that, and it's been excellente. Can, can I'm in an open relationship. Yeah. Works really well for me. We dated for a while. We broke up very amicable, just like different stages of life. When we got back together, we like slowly got back together and never, it was never closed. Right. So, and I've, I've found this version of our relationship to be the healthiest, the most, and, and before I was like so happy. So for it to be even healthier, even more honest yeah. is like, I think Pretty that's, incredible. that is incredible. And I think that what I've learned even through talking to people on my podcast and people like you is that we, my husband and I really both subscribe to the rule following of, of straight society for a long time. We dated for five years until we got engaged. We were engaged for a little more than a year. We had a beautiful wedding with many queer people there, not as many as there would be now. Four years later, my gay love. I have so many queer friends in LA that like I didn't have in New York and I were now fucking other people together. And it's like, we have so opened our worldview of what we can do. And this has felt just so much more affirming that we are not limited to, well, we married each other when we were 30. We're never going to be with anyone ever again because that's what we're supposed to do. We're both attracted to other people. We've always talked about wanting to fuck other people. I am a horny girlina who will, I fuck a daddy, uncle, pastor. I will fuck, I fuck so many people on the subway, but never knew that I could fuck them. And now that I can, it's like such, it's such a world opener. And all this to say, I have not had sex in a while, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I, got, I got to New York a few days ago and the eye fucking on the subway has been, it, it feels almost like sex to me. Sam I, Morrison, my friend talks yes. so much about eye fucking. He fucking loves it. The anticipation, the uh, tension. Okay. This story comes up. So let's pretend this happened really recently, but it was a big deal for me. I was in therapy telling my therapist how guilty I felt because I was eye fucking this guy hard and he was eye fucking me back. And it was very, this good. is, I think like a great example of like open relationship talk that I think is like so amazing. Mm. You were eye fucking this guy. Yeah. He was eye fucking you back and you felt guilty because you were in a closed relationship. Exactly. I'm assuming. Exactly. That now look, every relationship is different. There are going to be people out there that are like, I don't care if my like husband, I fuck someone like, 
There is yeah, a human but then being, gonna be. but then there are people who would feel like that was cheating. Exactly. And I'm not saying either of those people are wrong, but when you get into an open relationship and you can have a conversation with your partner where you can say, I was, I fucking someone on the subway today. How does that make you feel? Yes. And that can be a discussion that you have in your relationship the same way you talk about other points where you may have bickered exactly. during the day or like the way that they don't take the garbage, whatever incidents, when you can put attraction into that box of things that you're able to openly discuss, especially because the it's a whole relationship becomes more communicative Wow, and there's more trust because there's no little things that you're sweeping under the rug. And wow. you're like you acknowledging- have ra radical, I hate to be gay about it, but you have radical honesty. Yes, and you're acknowledging your human experience. You're acknowledging your human experiences. In a way that you don't feel guilty about. Yeah. And that's what my therapist said. This helped me ever since she said this. She goes, Eric, you can think whatever thought you want that you have organically about that person. Were you looking at them on the subway? We're looking at you? Yes, yes. It's your actions that decide if that was a cheating moment or if you are crossing a line. And ever since she said that, and I was like, okay, I am a horny person that loves to eye fuck. I can fuck them in my head. I can do anything. My thoughts are my thoughts. But once I take action yeah. that I know is crossing a line, that is when I can really, you know, I can worry. And right. her giving me that ownership was like, oh my God. And I, to I, discuss that with, be able to discuss it with your partner where both of you are aware that you are human beings who have thoughts exactly. and attractions and desires and you haven't acted out on it. And you're going to your partner to be like, hey, I'm feeling this way. Like, I don't know what to do with this. What do you, what, yeah. what do you do when you feel this way? Like, how do we feel about this? And to not be so enmeshed and not that I'm saying this about you, but just to be like, it's not so enmeshed and codependent with someone that you don't feel alone in your own head. Oh yeah. Because it's like, you should still own, that is a space that truly only you will ever occupy and have domain over and it should be really, really sacred. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's about attraction or anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And I think too that it, I love about being queer is that because I've divorced myself from the straight mentality of I can only be with my partner, I can only think about my partner. Once I opened that up, it added just more dynamics to our marriage. Yes. And yeah. also more like excitement. And again, the honesty has brought us closer because ironically, when you are bringing other people in, it makes you feel more intimate with the one. Yes. Mm. Yes. Because it's so much more about your love. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's also about like, truly being, I think it's us being there for each other by, by moving into the stage of our relationship. Yeah. And we both, you know, I, I met him when I was 20, newly 24 years old. And for a, a, a queer person that is, I mean, I came out, you know, right before I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. I moved to New York for college. I had my first kiss my freshman year. I lost my virginity my junior year. Yeah. I had one You're boyfriend new. for two years. We break up. I meet my now husband. And so that's still, that's yeah. like what in a straight world that would be like your college boyfriend. Yeah. So I know a lot of couples, especially straight couples, but many couples look back with regret for not having what sowed their oats or yeah. fucked enough people. Yeah. And I think that this has been like a bit healing for my younger self. Oh my God. A slut, a phase can be so healing for your so younger self. Healing. My therapist literally even said that to me is she was like, I was like talking about this kind of stuff and she, she was like, well, sometimes I think the healing comes through the action. She's like, I just like think you would feel better if you fuck people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. You can learn. I feel like we've talked about this before, but you can learn a lot by meeting a lot of people and understanding your chemistry, what works, what doesn't work. Flings can really help understand, like micro flings mm -hmm. like can really help you understand who you are in a relationship. Mm. Can I ask one question? Who everyone wants to know? The big thing is how do you bring up the open relationship question? Because oh. people are thinking it. I don't really have a great answer. I'm not a therapist, guys. So we're a comedy podcast. I know we talk about serious things. I can't like this is the one where our opinions don't really matter. Yeah. But for me, we were open and we never closed. So we started open. So it was so much easier. So, but you were in a marriage, dude. Oh, oh God. I'm okay. I'm okay. This is such a good question. And I got to put foam on that. I walk out. There's blood tripping <laughs> on my neck. Um, I love this question because usually I have a really fast answer, but let me tell you, 
Okay. So my answer is in our relationship, we always, we, we graduated from one grade to the next until the graduation became a threesome. And what happened is first step, I'm attracted to that person. You were openly talking about who you were attracted to. And that was almost from the jump. Yeah. Did you see that guy? Fuck, he's hot. Why do you think he's hot? He's hot because of this. Boo, 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 boo. Would the jealousy come in a bit? But it was still pretty like, we're fucking gay guys that are horny for other guys. Fine. That's years and years and years. Then it became, do you ever think we would Mm. be open? Do you ever think? uh, What I'm hearing here is light. 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 And oh, not calculating yeah. it all in your own head and bringing it as a fully finished product. It sounds like yes. it was a group An evolution journey. together. Yeah. And that is so well said because I remember having those thoughts and I'm a neurotic Jew that really overthinks as well, if I may empathize. You diagnosed me correctly. <laughs> and so I remember my brain being like, well, I think one day maybe I would want to, but I don't know if that would change our relationship and they would lead to a breakup, but I want to talk about it, but I don't want it to be too heavy. And so then yes. I went into... Maybe do you, like Betty Boop was like, do you think maybe we could one day have an <laughs> idea about fucking someone else? <laughs> and then, and then, he, and then he was a little like, yeah, I think maybe one day, but not now. That's kind of what it was. And I was like, absolutely, absolutely more. So then, so then you started taking a chalk to the wall, counting the days. <laughs> yeah, and then we, um, I don't think I've said this publicly, but I'm so excited to say it publicly now. A few years in, we were still very monog, but we took an international trip. And we had one experience. I won't go like too much into it, but we had one like ex- op- experience that was a little opening that was because we were in Europe and we thought the rules didn't apply. And we were both like, <laughs> we were both like on the same page. We're like, if you want an open relationship, go to international waters. Yeah, so sorry, it, it's gonna cost <laughs> some money. There's no laws. If there's budget, take go to Air France, do Air France. It's so funny, so it's Europe. <laughs> it's, we're like, I mean, come on, honey. It's the gayest place. It's gay Disney World. Okay, it's different when you get there. So yeah, Paris has Disney Paris and just gay Paris, which is fucking other people. So <laughs> we end up going back to New York, back to our lives, monog, monog, monog. And then we would still reference it. You, okay, I don't want to pry about your your gay experience in Europe, your open experience yeah. in Europe. But like, uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Because, wow, that was so easy. That required almost nothing. No, only if you're comfortable, because I oh, think yeah. it's like, that was it. That was the moment where everything changed. Well, it was. And by the way, it was a moment that we haven't really repeated. And I and, and I can safely tell you what it was because it's very like, happened. we went to a night that a lot of like queer spaces, but especially like gay men spaces, like jockstrap night at a bar. Yeah. Which then, of course, becomes maybe a, a, a jock strap is being touched by someone you've never met before, right. and that jock it's strap a, is yours. Yes. So, like, that's what that, and it was very overwhelming. I was wholly freaking out. I mean, I was just so nervous because, again, I it was. My, you don't know. Her, my history. You're in an environment where, like, there's cruising, where there's yeah. grabbing, there's grabbing, and it's like it's not that it's unconsensual. It, it, it's just like. Yeah, what is the word? It's, it, it, it's sort of like, because you know what space you're going into and you really need to know what space you're going into yeah. when it comes to, but like Sam talks to me about this all the time where it's like, the rules are just a little bit different because you're in a space where it's like, this is what happens. People know what happens. Exactly. You can leave the space at any time. Like, you And know. the funny thing about it is that I didn't experience being like, that was the fucking shit. I want to do that for, it was almost like so much that I was like, okay, parts that were awesome. Parts of it were a little a lot overwhelming and yeah. overwhelming. And so we kind of like, I put it in my back pocket of an experience of like, okay, wow. And you're there together. Yeah. And it's not like, it's, it's not even like it was planned. It was sort of just sort of like, right. you're in this environment, very sexy, sexy environment. Exactly. And things are, there's less agency on your guys's part. Maybe things are like people are brushing past you, yeah. kind of like touching you. So like, I imagine it's like, it's kind of hard to like get jealous of someone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like once, yeah. Yeah, it, it does feel like a different universe and a different world. And so that's why, what you know what actually happened talking about my neuroses as we go back to our Airbnb after that, <laughs> after that party. <laughs> and I go to him, I was like, does this change everything? Like, are we, are, are we gonna now become open? And then we're gonna now all of a sudden like drift apart and break up. And of course he's like a, a Catholic who has never had an emotion in his life. And he was like, no, we're fine. I was like, okay. Like, and I just like believed him because <laughs> yeah, he was so. That's like the most incredible part 
with the openness. It's yeah. like when you have, when you have a moment like that and you're like, am I a bad person yeah. for like having a desire exactly. and you tell your partner and your partner's like, no, I love you. You have desires. I have desires. Like that's, that's what makes the trust like just go zero to a million. Exactly. Well, not even zero, but like, you know, good to great. Good to great. And then we had a great rest of our trip. We go back to New York and then cut to, we never had another experience until after, you know, years after we got married and decided with this move across the country, I really did the move as yes, a career thing because I was feeling a little frustrated here, but as just like an adult experiencing a new chapter of their life, I said, I want to jump into opportunities. I want to say yes to things. And we both knew in our bones that trying it once or twice was not just like the pair sync was not going to be the end all be all. And we ended up doing it. And, um, it's, we've actually not had as many like jealousy or like fighting yeah, issues than I, that I thought we would at all. It's yeah. actually been like, pretty seamless if I may knock on wood. Yeah. 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 Somewhere anywhere. Yeah. My experience as well. Yeah. So really incredible. Thank you for sharing all that. That was really vulnerable. Thank you. And thank you for, I, I, I always love to talk to queer people about things like this in an empowering way. And I, and I appreciate, of course it is vulnerable, but it's also important. I think another person who, does this is Ryan O'Connell who did my podcast recently. He's, you know, special on Netflix and he's so open about how he felt like because he is disabled that society cut off his dick and now he's like putting his dick back on and feeling uh, his sexuality. Yeah, so we, we have an episode from a few years ago that we talk about like gaining your sexuality back after like, uh, you know, getting diagnosed with a disability. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really, and I think it's just so, it's so incredible for people to be open in that way. And I'm inspired by Ryan because he just did my show in LA and he normalizes what we're talking about, that we are humans who are going to want to eye fuck or be horny for someone else. And even in a, what was a monogamous relationship to communicate that in a way that feels healthy and safe, it actually helps you grow. And I, and I am just grateful that I got to talk about it here. Well, thank you for sharing. I'll say too, that's one of my favorite parts of like being on this podcast that I'm so grateful to you for is like having these conversations because if there's no cameras and no microphones, this would still be like so valuable to me, like as a young queer person, but like truly it's like, I don't know. It's really cool. It's like led a lot of, uh, so much of like my feeling of like, let me see, this is gay, but like my feeling of like belonging in the queer community. And like, like you said, like the possibility of what your relationships can be outside mm. of like typical straight rules is like, I feel like I get so introduced to that through these conversations. So like, thank you for like, just the personal growth of this too. Like this was really, yeah. Um, can we go to Maddie? Of course. Maddie, did you have gay sex this week? Um, I did not. Uh, <laughs> that's very on brand for me. Say the cheesiest heartfelt. Mm, and then <laughs> I went home alone. Uh, no, I did not. But the thing I was, okay. So in my little like theory corner, if you're not up to date, we, Zach Zimmerman changed my life when he was like, this girl is all theory, no praxis when it comes to queerness. And Great episode, by the way. Laugh so if you haven't hard. Watched it. It's really funny. Um, but I started reading again. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like forgot that books are like so good. Books are amazing. And I started reading nonfiction and feeling your brain go at a different pace from the pace it goes at on your phone. It's like resyncing your mind with the pace of your like animal body. Mm. I'm interested to know how this gets back to gender. That is, well, that's, it, it does because Oh, I think I know it does. <laughs> the internet, You're an artist. You come in here, you literally <laughs> pick out a hat out of a hat, some like non-sexual activity. And you're like, as an artist, how can I link this back to my gender? So today we, we have reading. Here we go. <laughs> and the way reading links back to gender is that like, okay, the internet is like, has was so helpful for me, especially like growing up on the internet. Like I was like using they, them pronouns in like my freshman year of high school. And that like was a real organic emotion, but it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't found certain online communities that like, you know, I mean, even just like Tumblr and like finding out what like a demi boy is and being like, maybe that's me. Like, so the internet's good for that. But I think now as an adult, now that I have the terminology and I know it, now the important thing is like getting back into my body and feeling it on a day to day basis. And that is like unplugging from the internet and like reading, like, I just feel like has slowed 
not not slowed in like a lesser way, but slowed my brain down to a pace where I can like feel things as they come. And when it comes to gender, I think I can react a lot more organically to how I'm feeling on a day-to-day basis without being overwhelmed by like just so many images that I don't even know where I fall in it. Yeah, I think like clarity, like being able to be um, responsive rather than reactive, rather than Mm. rushing to go and like, you know, that can be applied to literally every have thought you have throughout the day. But when you have something as big as like your gender going on, like being able to slow down and have some clarity and not necessarily be in a rush can maybe take the panic out of it a little bit. Yeah, that there's no urgency. Nobody's like waiting for an answer. Oof. Like, I talk about in therapy about the countdown clock. I go through my life a lot thinking that there's a countdown and I need to have my openness figured out now. I need to have my career be in a certain point now. I have to have my development. Fi- it's like- there is no clock and it's, it might be the Judaism. It might be, (laughs) it might be something else, but like taking the breath. And I'm sure like the book connection is that you've cleared out the noise of the everything else. And you're just present. Well, Reading is one. Exactly. Reading requires you to be present. Yeah. You're turning off your thoughts, not turning off your thoughts, but if a thought comes into your brain, you're almost naturally neg- meditating in a way because you're like, oh, I had a thought. I got distracted from my yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, I go back to my book where I was reading. That's If a lot of people have not tried meditation, what I just described is meditation, but there's no book. You're, you're sitting, you're focusing on your breathing. Oh, I had a thought. I'm going to go back to my breathing. It's not about not thinking. That's a great way to put it. It is not about not thinking. It's about looking at that thought, realizing that you had it. Oh, I lost my place in my book. I'm going to go back to my book, but it's instead of your book, it's your breathing. So there is something like meditative about same thing with exercise, like anything where you're forced to be present. That's like a light form of a mindfulness or meditation. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, meditation, reading and exercising put you back in your body that I think if you're questioning your gender is, is extremely, extremely useful to feel like, connected to your body. And I wouldn't have thought of those as like, quote unquote, gender things, but they are like kind of the most important thing when it comes to my gender right now is like, if I work out and I read and I calm down, I feel good and I feel like myself, which is the whole point of the gender exploration anyway. This was so cheesy. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, but I do really mean Honestly, it. <laughs> I think your ability to make anything about gender is why you're going to be a great podcast host for like the long run because oh, you. you're going to run out of shit to talking about. So <laughs> if we can connect back the most asinine. And this inane, is my fish food is connected to gender. <laughs> where you're going to be on this podcast a long time. Oh yeah, I'll say what I just said was mortifying. <laughs> well, it's a weird thing like as a comic too where you're like, if no one's laughing, you're like, I'm bombing yes, and it's like yes. no, no no i'm just saying a serious thing yes it's okay yeah. so thank you for that was my corner well, i thought that was a great episode what do you want to plug your your podcast yeah, that was very vulnerable maddie i'm so thank you for telling mm-hmm. us that you read <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you want to what do you want to plug your you big- i first want to say i have read before um <laughs> i host that's a gay ass podcast ashley's going to be coming back on Maddie's coming on and I do live shows. That's a gay ass live show that has been doing New York and LA, but it'll be in your city soon. Fuck yeah, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on tour. AshleyGavin.com. Uh, Patreon.com slash WHGS. Maddie, plug your stuff. I'm on Instagram at Maddie T. Wiener. Um, I'm going on the road. I have a mail and text alert thing. I write some essays on Substack. I have another podcast, but it's all in my bio. Excellent. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. We couldn't make this podcast without you. Patreon.com slash WHGS. If you're already donating, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can donate as little as a dollar a month, you piece of shit. And then um, my tour dates, AshleyGavin.com. And I'm going to forego a a gay thought for the next couple episodes because I'm just trying to bang these out and it is four in the morning (laughs) before I um, head out on a little little break. Um, So, yeah, I guess my gay thought for these episodes is... uh, what is your, what are you doing? What are you doing to treat yourself, you little queer? <laughs> what are you doing? Write in, put in the comments over the next couple episodes. Where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you doing it with? What does relaxation mean to you? Summer, like August time relaxation. 
All right, guys, have a great week.